Good afternoon everyone. So today class will be discussing capillary puncture equipment and procedures. So first let's define what is a capillary puncture. Capillary puncture, it is also known as skin puncture. It is a method that uses a lancet to make a small incision into the capillary bed to obtain a small volume of blood specimen. So normally, saan po tayo na sa pag capillary puncture? Normally, sa fingers, pwede din sa heel or dun sa heel toe for babies. At dati din, capillary puncture ginagawa din siya sa earlobe, yung ear, yung parang laman or skin na tira dun sa ears natin externally. So, what are the equipments included for capillary specimen collection? So first we have lancet or the incision devices. It is a sterile sharp instrument used for making cuts into the skin for finger or heel puncture. So class makikita nyo dyan yung picture katabi nung mismong definition ito. Yan yung normally na ginagamit na ngayon na lancet. Pero dati class meron tinatawag na feather lancet. Yung feather lancet class para siyang Di ba yung kita nyo dito, parang isang diretso lang siya. Ang feather lancet class, pag ganyan yung dulo. So, mas masakit yun pag tinusok sa inyong fingers. Tapos ngayon, medyo techy na. We have the laser lancet. It produces hole in the skin by vaporizing water in the skin. And it eliminates the risk of sharp injury. So, syempre, dito sa Philippines, hindi pa siya normally ginagamit. Ang normal pa din na ginagamit sa atin is yung lancet. Manual pa din tayo. So, we have the micro collection container and the microtube. So, it is used to hold blood specimen collected in the capillary puncture. So, normally, ang volume na kaya ng isang micro collection tube is from 0.5 ml to 1 ml of blood. We also have microhematocrit tubes and sealant. So, yung microhematocrit tubes, ito, yung sealant, dun yung pinaglalagyan ng microhematocrit tube. So, the microhematocrit tube is either plastic or glass used for hematocrit determinations. So, one end is sealed with the sealant made up of clay or plastic. So, once na kumuha kayo ng blood, sa fingers ng isang patient, uh, ilalagay nyo siya sa microhematocrit tube if ever may request na hematocrit. Tapos, ang ginagawa, tinutusok dyan kasi itong puting toklas, yan, itong puting yan, clay yan, so siya yung magsisil dun sa tube. Tapos, after nyong masil, isa centrifuge nyo na. We also have microscope slides. So, para yan, saan yung ginagamit? Normally kasi, nagkakapillary puncture pag kinukuha ang blood type. So, minsan, once na napuncture nyo na yung mismong finger, diretso na sa slide yung blood. Yung blood, tapos lalagyan nyo ng reagent para to determine yung blood type ng isang patient. Pwede din siya for blood film para makita nyo yung mismo mga RBCs or WBCs sa blood. We also have warming de devices, katulad nung sa venipuncture, warming devices is used to increase blood flow, sevenfold by warming the puncture site. So we have capillary blood gas or the CBG. It is used for collecting capillary blood gas specimens which contain CBG collection tubes. Steerers, magnet, and plastic caps. So, hindi siya common dito sa atin. Hindi din common na ginagawa ng mga medtech. Kasi nga yung mga blood gas analysis, normally ang nagawa nun ay yung mga respiratory therapies. So, what are the composition of capillary blood specimens in the test and the capillary reference value? So, definition of terms. What is arterial blood? siya yung bright red 
blood and is oxygenated, bright red, and is oxygenated blood in the circulatory system. Pag sinabi namang venous, venous is dark red in color because it is deoxygenated. Capillary blood, it is referred to the specimen for infants, preferred specimen for infants, young children, elderly patients, and patients with severe burns. Interstitial fluid, it fills the spaces around the cells. And intercellular, it is found inside the cells and facilitates the movement of fluid in the membrane and blocks the entrance of unwanted materials. So what's the difference or what are the difference na values na mga analytes between capillary blood and venous blood? Sa so capillary blood, mas mataas ang glucose kaysa sa venous. Um, ang total protein naman, calcium and potassium, mas mababa sa capillary blood kaysa sa venous blood. So, what are the indications of performing capillary puncture on adult children and infants? So, capillary puncture can be alternative to venipuncture under the following circumstances. Una, yung veins are fragile and not accessible. Veins are reserved for another procedure. Merong clotting tendencies. Takot sa needle yung patient. And yung veins will be used for glucose monitoring and OGTT. Bakit nire-reserve yung veins for glucose monitoring or OGTT? Kasi class sa glucose monitoring or sa OGTT, normally nakakatatlo or apat na tusok. So, pag nakaapat na tusok na, masakit na yun for the patient. So, mas maganda na mag capillary puncture na lang kayo if ever may other request pa yung physician. So, capillary puncture is also preferred method for infants and young children. Bakit? Risk ng anemia or cardiac, cardiac arrest kasi pag ginamit nyo even yung puncture tapos baby pa, ilang, ilang ml ng blood yun? 3 ml, 5 ml? Sobrang lit pa ng baby, kaunti pa yung blood niya. So, may risk for anemia and cardiac arrest. Pag infants at young children, it only requires small amount of blood. It could damage the veins and tissues. Puncturing could result to hemorrhage, thrombosis, gangrene, and infection. Risk of injury, tapos capillary blood is the preferred specimen, again, for infants and young children. So, capillary puncture should not be used for ESR, blood culture, and studies that need plasma specimen or have large volume specimen requirement. Bakit po? Kasi lalo na sa blood culture. Sa blood culture, normally two sites yun. Two sites ng blood collection. Tapos tig 5 ml. So hindi talaga pwede ang capillary puncture. Kasi mas madaling magclot ang blood pag capillary puncture. At kung matagal yung pagkuha nyo ng dugo, maglaklat agad yung blood. So, kung sa venipuncture, merong order of draw. For capillary puncture, meron ding order of draw. Anong una sa capillary puncture? First, we have the blood gas. Sunod, EDTA. Sunod, lithium heparin. Sunod, sodium fluoride. Sunod, yung with clot activators. Tapos, panghuli with no additive. So, anong kulay nun? For EDTA, syempre purple or lavender. Lithium heparin, that's green. Sodium fluoride, Sodium fluoride, that's a gray. Clot activator, normally, sa hospitals, ganito yung kulay nung microcollection tube, color gold, na nag-yellow gold. Tapos yung no additive, red. So, kala sa book nyo, meron din dun table, basahin nyo na lang. Additional info din yun. So, what are the capillary puncture steps? First, review and check the accession test request. Siyempre, ulit laging meron dapat requisition form or request from your physician bago kayo mag-extract ng blood. So, pinakamahalaga, always identify the patient properly and correctly. Tapos, verify diet restrictions and latex sensitivity. 
put on gloves and position the patient. So select the puncture site. Ito yung sinasabi ko. Pwede sa fingers, sa heel, pag babies at sa earlobe. Class, ngayon hindi na ginagawa yung sa earlobe. Bakit? Kasi um, invasive siya kasi sobrang lapit mo sa patient once na magpapuncture ka dun sa ears. So parang ikaw maiilang ka din yung pasyente mo maiilang ka din kasi sobrang lapit nyo sa isa't isa. So ang ginagawa na lang ngayon is yung sa fingers at sa infant's heel toe. San po sa fingers yung ring at great ring finger doon tumutusok. Paano po tumutusok pag capillary puncture? Dapat yung lancet nyo is perpendicular to the lines na makikita nyo doon sa fingers nyo. Tapos, warm the site, clean the site. Same lang din sa venipuncture. You need to prepare the equipment. Tapos, puncture the site and discard the lancet. So, first, blood drop should be wiped away. Mahalaga, 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 mahalaga yun. Um, the first uh, blood drop should be wiped away. Bakit? Kasi baka meron pang tirang mga alcohol. So, pag meron pa mga tirang alcohol, it might affect the result ng test procedure or test request ng physician. So, dapat we na-wipe. Tapos, you need to fill and mix the tubes. Mahalaga, mahalagang imimix kasi class, pag sa micro-collection tubes, madaling mag- Clot and dugo. So, place gauze or cotton and apply pressure. Label the specimen and dispose the used materials. So, ano yung thin and thick blood smear preparation? It is used to check abnormalities in the blood cell. So, the thick blood smear is used to determine patient with malaria. So, yan class. Magkasama na yan sa isang slide. Itong thick, pabilog siya, um, it is a size of a dime, tapos yung thin smear, yung normal na blood smearing, tapos makikita dyan, dito sa thick smear, ma-identify mo if present or hindi present ang malaria. Tapos sa thin smear, ma-identify mo kung anong species nung um, mosquito na nag kokos na malaria. Kasi di ba mayroong ngayon apat na klase ng kokos na malaria? Ano yung mga yun? Yung mga plasmodium. So, mayroong plasmodium falciparum, plasmodium ovale, plasmodium vibax, and plasmodium malaria. So, dun sa apat na yun, makikita kung ano yung plasmodium na nag infect dun sa patient. Ang pinaka-normal nor na plasmodium na makikita dito sa Philippines ay plasmodium falciparum. San po normal? Maki um, normally nakikita or common ang malaria dito sa Philippines sa Palawan. So, capillary blood gas, neonatal bilirubin, and newborn screening testing. So, capillary blood gas. Capillary blood gas is recommended for infants and small children. We also have neonatal bilirubin collection. It is used to help determine any liver disorder in infants. Newborn or neonatal screening, para saan po yan? It is used um, routine check for infants to determine inborn, in, inborn errors such as phenylketonuria, hypothyroidism, galactosemia, and cystic fibrosis. Class, sobrang dami pang mga inborn, inborn errors na nakikita once nag-undergo um, ng newborn or neonatal screening sa baby. So, ano ginagawa natin? We do the blood spot collection test. It is done 24 to 48 hours after the baby is born. Bakit po mahalaga newborn screening? Para at an early age pa lang, bata pa lang, makorek na yung mga abnormalities sa baby. So, saan po dito sa Batangas yung as in talagang meron silang Newborn Screening Center. Sa pagkakaalam ko is sa Don Mercado Medical Center sa yung makikita sa may Tanawan, Batangas. So class, that's it. That's the end of the lesson for today. So hope you understand something. Thank you and God bless.